Kids, before you watch this episode of Nightly News Kids Edition, please let a parent or grown-up know that in this episode, we're going to be talking about issues surrounding race in America, because they may want to watch with you and talk about it after. Coming up with kids across the country going back to school, your important questions answered. I'm going to start school soon and we will be wearing our mask all day. My question is, are some masks better than others? What is the best type of mask to wear? Thank you. Then we'll head out west and introduce you to a special kind of first responder. Oh, she's so soft. This golden retriever bringing comfort and smiles to firefighters in California. And challenge accepted. One museum is inspiring families to recreate their own masterpiece. The details just ahead. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Kate Snow. It's really nice to be with you all. While Lester's taking some time off this week, we've got some great stuff coming up, including a really adorable golden retriever who's helping firefighters out west. And a little bit later on, we'll tell you about a cool summer program in Ohio that taught kids about the world we live in through writing. But let's start with what continues to be the biggest story in the news, the coronavirus. New cases are still popping up across the country, but there is some good news. Officials are are seeing fewer positive tests coming back now in places like California. We know you guys still have a lot of questions, so let's bring in our friend, Dr. John Torres. Dr. John, good to see you. Our first question is from Kansas. Hi, my name is Bethany. I'm eight years old and I live in Kansas. I'm going to start school soon and we will be wearing our mask all day. My question is, are some masks better than others? What is the best type of mask to wear? Thank you. Dr. John, that is a great question. It is a great question, and it can be confusing. There's a lot of different types of masks. So let me go over some of them. This is the N95 mask. This is the one that gives you the most protection. But honestly, it can be uncomfortable and hard to wear. We typically reserve these for people who are working in a hospital system or in direct contact with somebody who might have coronavirus. Otherwise, you can look at ones like this. This is a surgical mask. It offers you almost as good protection. I use these a lot when I'm in the hospital, but there's some you can get that are a lot like this that you can buy or make at home. The important part is that you have two or three layers of material. That'll give you the best protection there. You can even make them fun and have your favorite sports team on one of them just to make it something that you wear all day long. But Bethany, honestly, the best answer is the best mask is the one you're going to wear for as long as you need to. I love the shout out for Real Madrid there. <laughs> Thank you. Our next question is from New York. Hi, my name is Mahi Parikh, and I'm nine years old from New York. I have a question for you today. Once I get a vaccine for COVID-19, how will things turn back to normal? Thanks. Dr. John, what will it mean when we have a vaccine? And what it means, especially to answer Mahi's question about how will things turn back to normal, is they'll t turn back to normal slowly. Because first we're gonna give vaccine to people who need it the most. And those are people who work in the hospital or possibly could get really sick from coronavirus. Then we'll start giving it to other people. You can't give it to everybody all at once. So hopefully enough people get it there over time that we can get that protection across the whole country, across the whole world. And then we can start going back to normal. But there might be some things that we're not doing again, like shaking people's hands or hugging people we might not know very well, but we're going to have a new normal, which means we will get life back to normal. It's just a little bit of time here to do that. Dr. John Torres, always great to talk to you. Thanks so much. Let's talk about another story that's been in the news a lot lately, big wildfires burning out west. And you know how we always see firefighters putting out the flames with hoses? Well, there's another first responder hard at work, and she's bringing some much-needed smiles to the front lines. In Northern California, firefighters have been hard at work. And so has their four-legged pal, Carrot. The two-year-old golden retriever is a therapy dog trained to help during a crisis. She's bringing hope, comfort, and smiles to firefighters in need of a break. Carrot doesn't judge you. She, uh, she comes up to you, she's looking for a person in a uniform. Um, she gives you her full attention and she's so excited to see you. She wags her tail. It's just a moment of, of solace. It's a moment to allow us to just reconnect and, and remind us of, of what we love and what we're working for. Kareth loves swimming, hiking, and most of all, 
hugging. She just put her paws on my shoulders and just gave me undivided attention and love. And it completely just took me out of that, that sad zone. And uh, it was amazing. Whether Kareth's giving big kisses, listening in on calls, or spending time at the firehouse, her positivity is contagious. helping hardworking firefighters get through a tough job. And joining us now are Heidi Carmen and Kareth. Hi. Hi. Tell me more about what kind of training Kareth has. Kareth is trained to be a therapy dog. And I got her as a puppy when she was eight weeks old and trained her of basic obedience and just took her around to all kinds of places. Um, so that she could get used to all different kinds of scenarios. And then she was certified as a therapy mm -hmm. dog, which means that she goes and helps people who are just, you know, in a hospital or her favorite thing is to help firefighters. I love that she's looking right at us right now. Um, I have a dog I've been cuddling with a lot. What kind of difference do you see when Kareth's able to comfort the firefighters? Well, I, Kareth is really interesting. I don't think that I could have trained this in Kareth. She knows when there's a firefighter who is feeling sad and she just goes up to them and she just kind of sits real close and leans in and just lets them, you know, do this with her. And she just helps them feel just like calm. A lot of the firefighters are working like two, three weeks in a row without going home to their families and they really miss their kids and their dogs. And so... Kareth helps them yeah. to just feel a little bit more um, comfortable and kind of think about their family in a happy way. Yeah, I think it's great. Heidi and Kareth, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate it. Thanks. It's really great to be here. Now let's switch gears and talk art. There's a museum that's challenging kids to get creative and use their imagination. Our own Kevin Tibbles has the details. Life imitates art in a lockdown. With museums and galleries closed to corona, California's Getty Museum challenged folks to get imaginative, a perfect pastime for kids. Recreate an American masterpiece like a Norman Rockwell painting or a French classic painting by Henri Rousseau using whatever materials you've got hanging around the house. When I saw a portrait of a young man, I was going like, oh, God, that totally looks like me. In North Carolina, great artists like Botticelli and Filippo Lippi made an appearance in the Montgomery family's home, turning their living room into an art gallery featuring them. I think it was special because especially during this time of a lot of stress, we returned to the arts just to find our way and to find comfort and to be entertained. For all you kids wanting something to do that's fun, well, look up a few portraits and get in a picture. Playtime and learning time wrapped into pictures they'll cherish forever. Hey, Mom and Dad, they won't even know they're studying art history. My favorite part about it was putting on the costumes. The Getty Museum's project has been so popular with families, it is now planning to publish all of them in a new book with all kinds of pandemic-inspired portraits. You, too, can sit for one of the great painters. So when you see the real thing in a museum someday, you can say, Hey, I did that. From Whistler's mother to a pug in a pearl earring and a red wagon crossing the Delaware. New masterpieces created for these extraordinary times by you. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News. Kevin, thanks. Finally, as the summer winds down, we want to take a moment to tell you about one summer program in Ohio that has helped kids learn about race in America and the world around them using the power of writing. Kids, you might want to grab your parents to watch this one. Here's Rahema Ellis. These Ohio teenagers are finding their voice this summer. When you're a kid, you never realize how different you are from other people. The sound of the loud thud in the middle of the night gave me a fright. Writing letters to young black people who have lost their lives in encounters with police. Connor, Malachi, and Rhea are part of a summer program in Youngstown, Ohio called Inspiring Minds. We always believe there's healing in writing. So we decided to do a whole series for our literature piece this summer where they wrote letters to those 
who died due to social injustice. Dear Tamir Rice. Dear Brianna. Dear Elijah McClain. He's basically a future version of me. Connor is writing to Elijah McClain, who died after a police encounter when stopped because a 911 caller said he looked suspicious. How has the writing program helped you to manage those scary thoughts? Sometimes when you're, especially in the world that's moving so fast, you need to just write out your feelings on paper, on some kind of surface that's not just your mind. Why me? How could this be? I didn't do anything wrong. In her letter, Rhea writes as if she were Breonna Taylor, who was killed in a police raid on her home. I was about to cry basically for her because it's just really emotional and it's a lot overwhelming. But I put those tears and all the emotions into my writing. Malachi is only two years older than Tamir Rice, who was shot by Cleveland police when they mistook his airsoft gun for a real gun. You're only 12 when you're at the park playing with a toy gun. Was it difficult to write this letter? No, because like I felt like it something that needed to happen so like the world can hear his story. Their stories are not lost on these kids. I hope people take this movement and all the protests that they will see that we how we feel and they'll ch at least try to make a change. Her name, her name, her name. So shout my name, shout their names, shout your name, shout everybody's name, because together is how we make change. Teenagers already changing by the power of their own words. Rahima Ellis, NBC News. Rahima, thanks. That's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question, please email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. As Lester likes to say, take care of yourself and each other.